Hey there, I'm Shane. Today I'm going to be talking about the transform and upright tool within Adobe Lightroom. It's also known as the geometry tool in newer versions. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can utilize this rather unappreciated tool to take images that would be otherwise unusable into very lovely flat compositions. This is going to be a relatively simple video where I'm going to be talking about the transform tool which is found within Adobe Lightroom. As I said, in newer versions of the app and on the mobile version, it's known as the geometry tool. And I'm actually going to make a separate video and I'm going to put that on my Instagram page where I'm going to talk about how to edit using this tool on a mobile phone. And I'll have a link to that video in the description of this one. Overall though, this is a very simple tool that's been around for quite a while now and doesn't require a lot of processing power, but it's a very useful tool when you're trying to fix an image that would be otherwise kind of unpresentable. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to use it, the limitations of it, and how to best plan around using it when you're taking your images. The concept behind this tool is rather simple. All it does is find two lines within an image and then make those lines perpendicular to each other. If you've ever used a tilt shift lens, this does a very similar effect, however, all digitally. I have a few example images here that I'm gonna use in this video, and you'll notice a common theme between all of them. Even though the subject matter is rather different, ranging from travel photography to weddings, they all have very prominent vertical lines in the image. This is because it's much easier to use the tool when you have vertical lines to kind of match up with the tool. Once you have the photo you'd like to edit and you go into develop mode within Lightroom, the transform tool can be found on the right hand side. For the sake of example today, I've moved it up to the top just to make it easier to find. However, normally it's just somewhere down near the bottom. Once you open the tool up though, you'll see there's a bunch of options. At the top, there's these buttons, which will be the automatic settings. And at the bottom are the sliders, which are the fully manual settings. I'm gonna first focus on the automatic settings at the top. The first and most useful option is the automatic button. And as the name implies, it automatically finds all the vertical and horizontal lines in the image and tries to line them up best with what Lightroom thinks will make the best image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and let Lightroom do its thing. And as you can see here, it just simply aligned the image so that the building in the middle is now square, which is kind of nice. And it already we can see a pretty dramatic improvement. With that said though, even though it worked really well in this situation, a lot of the time it will horribly mangle images, making them pretty much unusable, even more so than they were to start with. So we're going to talk about the rest of the options and why they might be useful. The next option up is the guided option, which I'm gonna to touch on last as it's the most useful but most complex. And I'm gonna move on to the level option, which is actually really, really simple. All it does is find one line in the image and decide that line is gonna be the horizon. So all it's gonna do is find one line, in this case it chose the curb, and make that the horizon of the image. Honestly, this tool doesn't do a whole lot more than what you could do yourself just by cropping the image and adjusting the horizon. However, it is useful when you wanna have a really quick and effective auto like leveling tool. And I find it actually works a little bit better than the option found within the cropping tool. Next up is the vertical upright tool. And this tool is very simple and it does exactly the opposite of the horizontal level tool. And rather than looking for horizontal lines in the image, what it does is look for vertical lines in the image and make those parallel with no regards to the horizontal lines. This has its place and is probably more useful when you have the corner of a building or like light posts or something where there's not a huge horizontal aspect to the image. However, in this example image that I'm working with, because I took the image so terribly at an angle, the building appears warped, even though vertically speaking, it is almost perfect. This leads to the last option, which is the full auto mode which is very similar to the first option that we used, which was just auto. The key difference between full and regular auto is that fully auto will find all the horizontal lines and all the vertical lines and try to align them. 
so it's going to be much more aggressive than any other of the modes. And this can be useful in certain situations, and with this image, it actually does a relatively good job because of how flat the composition is. However, if you do have lines that won't look normal if they're flattened out, this can often horribly mangle images again and make them less usable than they would have been otherwise. However, in certain situations like this one, it does a pretty good job. However, let's imagine a situation where Lightroom isn't able to automatically adjust the image. That's where the guided option comes in, which essentially allows you to pick which lines you want the image to be aligned to. To utilize this tool, all you need to do is click on the guided option and it's automatically going to open up the like guided option for you to use. If it's not done automatically, you'll see there's a little circle in the top corner here, or you can hit shift T to open up the tool to actually adjust it. So all I'm going to do is click and drag on the lines that I want the image to be aligned to, and it's going to magnify where my cursor is placed. And at first it seems like it's not doing anything, but that's because you have to have a couple lines already on the building for it to take effect. So once I place these two lines, it's going to do its thing and adjust the image. This does the same thing as the vertical upright tool at first, and you'll see my horizontal lines aren't adjusted yet. So what I'm going to do is pick a line on the building that I want to adjust to. It's going to be this trim right here. So I'm going to grab one line here and place it across to give it a horizontal axis that I want it to align to. And I'll put that there. And there we go. Now we'll see that it's aligned to the lines that I want it to be aligned to. And I think this gives me a very good option. The last thing I can do is say your image has another kind of warping at the top of the image still. I can add another line along the top of the building like over here even though I think this building is actually so old, the roof isn't exactly level. I'll give it a go to see what it looks like. And there we go. Now it's perfectly level. I'll see the sidewalk is a little bit at an angle and I think the building itself is a little warped, but it kind of is what it is. I think it actually resulted in quite a pleasing image and I'm gonna keep it with this for now for the rest of the examples and I'm gonna turn off the guided upright tool. One thing that you might have noticed is that in the corner of the images, we're getting these massive kind of white voids because as we're adjusting the edges of the image, it's going to require the image to be cropped. In order to compensate for this, Lightroom has an automatic mode where you hit constrain to crop and it's going to crop the image to the original crop that you had, um, but it often does a terrible job at this. So if you simply open the crop tool, you can adjust it again to something a little bit more reasonable. Uh, and yeah, fix it. So I'm gonna adjust this to be a square crop and we're gonna adjust from there. So I'm just simply going to go like this and then do, um, it's not gonna be centered perfectly. So it's gonna actually end up being a little off being a square crop. And I'm kind of happy with that, just like that. So moving on from there though, we can adjust the sliders. These are relatively simple. And you do have the option to adjust the image completely manually using the sliders. However, if your image needs this much work, Lightroom might not be the best program for it. And I suggest trying out using Photoshop in order to correct your image because you have a lot more manual control within that software than you do within Lightroom. With that said though, I'll go through each of the sliders and discuss what they do. First up is the vertical transform slider which all it does is kind of tilt the image from top to bottom. And then next up is the horizontal slider, which does the exact same thing on the horizontal axis, tilting it from right to left. The rotate tool is very self-explanatory as well, which just rotates the image, correcting uh, rotation. Usually I prefer to use the crop tool for this just because I find it's a little bit easier than using a slider. Next up in probably the most useful of all the sliders is the aspect tool. And this will stretch or kind of make the image wider depending on which way you pull the slider. I find this tool is very useful when you have a human subject in the image, such as this one where my, my couple in the middle looks a little bit short. So I'm just gonna make them a little bit taller by adjusting this aspect tool. And then I'll adjust the crop 
to compensate for that, make them look a little bit normal human dimensions. It will adjust whatever building you have in the image as well. However, people are going to be more attuned to normal human proportions and less conscious of if a building looks slightly warped from what it should look like. The last three sliders are the scale slider, which is essentially just adjusting how big or how small the image is. And then there is the X offset, which will adjust the horizontal axis of the image. And then the Y offset will adjust the vertical axis of the image. All of these are rather useless again, and they will help you adjust if you're working fully manually. However, I suggest avoiding them because they adjust your crop dramatically as well. Now that we know how to use the tool, it's time to talk about its limitations, and there's a few obvious issues that will start to become very apparent the more that you use it. The main and most obvious of which is that it doesn't create more pixels. What ends up happening is when you're stretching the image to adjust its perspective, it's going to do that, stretch the image, and the top of the image can end up looking blurrier than the bottom of the image that you're compressing resulting in a weird blurry gradient appearing. And this isn't gonna be an issue when you're presenting an image online. However, if you start printing these off at a larger scale, it will become quite obvious if you're heavily manipulating an image. The other main issue that you'll encounter is with regards to cropping. And when an image is too far misaligned from how you adjusted it, you'll have to often change the crop in resolution rather dramatically. In the example image that I used, it's pretty obvious. I had to change it from being a landscape photo to being a square perspective, which thankfully, thanks to Instagram, is a valid crop. However, it's not ideal. In, in some situations, you're gonna have to adjust the image too much to keep it being a deliverable image, and that's obviously not ideal. So with all that in mind, let's talk about how to best utilize this tool. The easiest way to best utilize the transform tool is to shoot at a wider angle than you originally were planning to. With this image here, I can see that I didn't give myself a lot of room to crop and post. And when I took it into Lightroom and I used the transform tool on it, it turned out to be a rather cool image, but I lost the edges of the building. In this next image, what I did was I shot at a wider angle and when I used the transform tool, I still kept all the subject buildings of the image in the crop, but they're all vertical now thanks to the transform tool. One thing you'll notice is that with all the example images I used in this video, they're all shot at 35 millimeters or wider up to 18 millimeters on a full frame camera. So when you have the opportunity to shoot at a wide angle, of a cityscape or just a landscape where you think you might want to use this tool, always lean towards the wider end. Another thing to get the most out of using this tool is something you probably already do, and that is trying to keep your horizon as flat as possible in your images and shooting perpendicular to it. I'm notoriously bad at this, and in most of my images, I end up shooting them at a weird angle accidentally because I'm so used to fixing it in a post. However, this is a good example where I shot relatively perpendicular to the horizon, and when I used the transform tool on it, you'll see that it didn't actually require that much adjustment, and it resulted in a much more pleasing image than I would have had if I shot it at a significantly greater angle and I was able to crop it to a very pleasing perspective. My last tip is going to be rather cheesy, and that is just to practice with the tool. A lot of the time, I find myself using on more and more images that I otherwise would have thrown out, and becoming aware of how the tool works and what situations it will be best used in and where it won't work at all is going to help you determine if you need to use it or if the image is garbage. And there's no harm in giving it a go if you just want to hit the auto option and just see what happens you'll be surprised sometimes by actually making a rather pleasing adjustment to an image that otherwise might have been garbage so that's going to be it for the video though i really hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions please leave them below i still try and answer every question that i get on my videos and i'd love to be able to help you out if you have any suggestions or corrections to anything I said in the video, again, please let me know. I'd love to be able to fix it. 
Um, and if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and liking the video or leaving a comment down below, just letting me know. It goes a really long way in helping me grow my channel and make more videos like this. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic day and have a good time editing. See you in the next one.